So the Christmas season has passed and now we're in ordinary time and there's something I think wonderful about ordinary time as well because I think when it comes to uh, sanctity, sanctity is lived out in the ordinary things, it's lived out in the ordinary events, it's lived out in our ordinary life. Uh, we can, it's good that obviously the, lit, the liturgical year has certain high points, we've got uh, the liturgical year beginning with Advent and Christmas and then we've got ordinary time for a bit and then we'll have Lent and Easter. Uh, and it, it's, we need these cycles, these, these reminders uh, of, of God's great work uh, in our lives and in history. Uh, and yet, as I say, sanctity is lived out in, in, in ordinary life, in the ordinary things. There may be some exceptional circumstances where someone has uh, a moment at the end of their life where they can convert uh, and maybe in a very selfless way give their lives to save others or something like that. But, but for the majority of us, we live out our, our sanctity in the ordinary things, the ordinary acts of service, the ordinary conversations, the daily, some might call it drudgery, uh, just the, the ordinary daily experiences. That's where sanctity is lived. Uh, and that, that's, where, that's where ordinary time comes in. It's to remind us that, that let's get on with it. All these wonderful things that we've heard uh, all over Christmas, uh, angels appearing and and singing Gloria and this new hope and new light given to the world, great, now carry it out into the real world. Now carry all that out into ordinary time with you. And get on with it. You know, like, I'll behold, I will be with you till the end of time, but get on with it. <laughs> I'll be with you. But we have to just bring this into, into our lives, into, into the, the everyday experience of our lives. Uh, our reading today from the letter to the Hebrews, it's such a, a wonderful letter about about priesthood uh, and about the dynamic of, 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 of God, of Jesus giving himself uh, as priest, as prophet, as king. And there's one little element of, of today's reading that I'd just like to hone in on, if I may. Uh, we could imagine if any of us were to see an angel, and maybe some of you have, uh, that that might be a fairly startling experience. Uh, to see an angel as they are in, in their radiance and there's a kind of a, there's a power in them and yet it's not a kind of a, it's not a power that we would, that we understand kind of with, with human eyes. It's not like they're powerful as in like they look, they all look like the rock, Dwayne Johnson or something like that. So, so these angels appear, oh, Gene, wow, look at the size of you. It's more, it's more like as angel appears and there's this kind of, there's this kind of, there's a real, very clear otherworldliness about them. You know what I mean? And if they have wings or not, I'm not really sure. Uh, but but there'll, be, there'll definitely be something very otherworldly, and you'll feel way out of your depth here. Like, uh, what do I even say? Um, do I? Do you, you speak English? <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you? I mean, how, how do you do? You, do you kneel, genuflect, prostrate? Do you often tea? Do you sit down? Do you stand? Do you? What do you do with your hands? <laughs> you know, when you meet an angel, like, there's going to be something just so kind of astounding and, and, and incredible and mysterious and mystical here. Uh, uh, right, it, they're extraordinary experiences. Okay. But our reading tells us, God has never said to any angel, you are my son. Today I have become your father. What, what, the, letter to the, what the author to the letter to, of the letter to the Hebrews is saying is that God has never said this to an angel, but he has said it to you. He has never said this to an angel, majestic and magnificent and powerful as they are. God has never said to an angel, you are my son. Today I have become your father. But he has said that to you. God has never said to an angel, I will be a father to him and he a son to me. But he has said that to you. This is the point that, 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 that the reading is making. That God has said to you, even though you are, no offense to you, less than an angel, God gives you that dignity, raises you up, wants you to, to, to share in his divine nature and raises you up to, to, to that level where, where he will say to you, I have become your father. You are a son or a daughter to me. We could, we could, we could meditate on that every day and we would still never get our heads. We'd only be just scratching the surface of what that mystery really means for the Lord to elevate our nature, to lift us up out of the muck and dirt and mire and sin and fallen nature that we find ourselves in, and yet to, to lift us up and say, I'm your father. I'm your father. 
Today you have become a son, a daughter to me. So it's a, a completely undeserved, unmerited gift. Right? The, the gift of God's fatherhood to us is completely undeserved, unmerited. It's just freely given. And it's, it's amazing. Uh, when we think of fatherhood today, it's so, on one hand, it, it's easy to become a father. Becoming a father doesn't, it's not very difficult. Uh, you know the biology, I don't need to go into it. Um, it it's relatively straightforward. Uh, becoming a dad, on the other hand, is something different entirely. Becoming a dad requires a good 20 years of sacrifice, if not more. And as with all things, we're always inspired, not just by people who, who, who pass, or people who kind of, uh, you know, they, they get the degree, or like, you know, they, they got onto the Olympic team, that's nice, like, that's nice. Getting onto the Olympic team is nice, I'm sure. Coming home at Olympic medals, that's, that's a different league altogether. Like, so, just kind of qualifying, you know, you know it's, like, it's like Irish football these days, we were over the moon when we qualify, you know. Uh, Qualifying like it's so, yeah, qualified, right. Uh, we're never really impressed by simply kind of qualifying or just getting in to the thing. We're, 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 all, we're impressed by those who excel. By those who excel. And when we think of, of fatherhood, there are plenty of fathers around the place, you know, and we, we all have one. Uh, not all succeeded, not all excelled. And, and just... One word was just coming to me earlier as I was thinking about fatherhood was, was, was the word hero, you know? I remember one of our priests at his first mass, um, he celebrated the mass, he's, he's American, uh, he celebrated the mass, and then after the mass, uh, he said, so I just want to thank you, Father Paul, for uh, the formation that you gave us in the seminary and for being a spiritual dad to us. Uh, thank you to all my brothers and sisters for coming so far and for the music and so on and so forth. And then he said, I want to thank my family, I want to thank my dad in a special way who has always been my hero. And I just went, oh. <laughs> but this emotion just came out of nowhere. It was just the most beautiful, like he's, he's a big guy. He's, he's, actually, he's actually twice my weight. He's a hundred and, well he was, um, not anymore. I was a bit skinnier in seminary. He was, he's 120 kilos, which is 20, 21 stone or something like that. Um, uh, and he just said, you know, I just want to thank you, my dad. You've always been my hero. And it just, I just thought that is, wow, that's such a beautiful thing to say. Like, that's just a powerful statement for a fella. You've always been my hero. His dad, by the way, looks, he's the, he's the head of Bruce Willis. And, uh, and he's a, a volunteer fireman. So he chops down buildings that are on fire with an axe to save cats. So yeah, he's a fairly heroic guy. But you think of fatherhood, and I was just, I was just like, you know, fatherhood and, and, and being a hero. And interestingly, when we think of like superheroes, and we, you know, we watch these movies and they're entertaining, and again, what makes a superhero super isn't just that they're powerful, but what they do with their, with their superpowers. And you know, they're willing to kind of uh, swallow the nuclear bomb or, or take on these alien invaders. So they're willing to actually risk themselves, is the point. You know what I mean? Being Superman and, you know, helping little children light their bonfires with their laser eyes while the place has been invaded by terrorists. Who cares? Superman, get your, look, you've got these powers, use them. Get on with it, save the world. Lighting fires and forest, you, you know. Like, it's nice, like, I'm sure you got your badges, well done. Um, but, like, there's a world to be saved here, you know. So, it's kind of, great gifts are given to you. There's also great responsibility given to you. Get on with it, you know. And it's kind of the same with fatherhood. And interestingly, uh, when it comes to becoming a saint, they use that word hero in a slightly different form. But in order to become a saint, you have to have displayed heroic virtue. Heroic virtue. In other words, in somewhat more contemporary language, in order to be a saint, you have to be a hero. In order to be a saint, you have to be a hero. You have to live whatever virtue it was to a heroic level, heroic level, not just qualifying, not just passing, but you live it to a heroic level. I emptied myself, sacrificed myself in whatever way, shape, or form that that might be for love of my children and my wife. That's fatherhood. It's, 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 it's a call to be heroic. If you're called to be a father, then you're called to be a saint in your fatherhood. If you're called to be a mother, you're called to be a saint in your motherhood. These things aren't separate. You're not called to be a saint independently of whatever your vocation is. You're called to be a saint in your vocation. 
So sanctify the vocation. Sanctify the ordinariness of your every day. So if you spend every day being a mom, then that's what you're called. That's what you're called to sanctify your motherhood, your daily service. I'm called to sanctify my priesthood, and to 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 sanctify every every day here, and to be to be a hero, to be a hero. And when we think of of the dignity of our call, as the Lord has given it to us has given to us, you are my son. Today I have become your father. And in this call to, 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 be, to be a hero, to be a saint in wherever the Lord has placed us, it all just flows so perfectly together. I, I should excel in virtue, and I can excel in virtue because God is my father. I, I can become a saint because God provides. If, if the Lord is... If the Lord has elevated me, then he has elevated. I'm no longer down there. He has elevated me. So he has elevated my nature. He has elevated, hopefully, my intellect, my will, my desires. Or at least he wants to. Or at least he can. The grace is available if I'll work with it. So I, I actually can be a heroic father, priest, husband, wife, student, missionary, whatever you are, engineer. I can live virtue to a heroic degree there in virtue of what God gives me, in virtue of his grace. So we ask the good Lord today that we might never forget our dignity, this powerful, freely given gift of being a son or a daughter of God. Majestic, mighty, and powerful as the angels are, they do not have this dignity. And maybe in a nice way, in a non-sinful way, they're envious of us. They would like this too. But God has never said to any angel, you're my son, today I have become your father. Or I will be a father to him, and he a son to me. He has never said this of an angel, but he has said this of you. Amen.